And I'm going to put this on YouTube so you will be forever infamous. All right. So here, let me let me introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. And if you want to really get into this conversation, uh, not only turn your, your cameras on, Carolyn and Brian and Andrew and Devin and Lillian and Mark, but if you really want to get into this conversation, drop your LinkedIn profile URL in the chat box. And for those of you who I've not already found, I'll find you. On, I will find you on LinkedIn and put you on the screen, so we can talk about. It. So, who am I? I'm a LinkedIn strategist. I am. Uh, I teach LinkedIn as a business tool to people who want to get real value out of LinkedIn. I um. I have classes, I have mastermind groups, I have corporations hire me to come in and teach their millions and millions of people in my mind how to use LinkedIn as a business tool. Uh, schools and universities and colleges hire me to teach uh, their students and graduate students and master's degrees and doctorates and sales professionals how to use LinkedIn as a business tool because LinkedIn is a business tool. You do not align LinkedIn with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Tinder, and Bumble. It's so, those are different. LinkedIn's a business tool. I got right over John's head with Tinder and Bumble, didn't I? Um, so I teach LinkedIn as a business tool is what I teach. And I break it down into three primary pieces that we will talk about today. Number one is how to build a profile that speaks to your target audience, which as students may change as time goes by, but you continuously look to speak to your target audience. The second thing, the foundational piece is how to build a real meaningful LinkedIn network, not just haphazardly connecting with every Tom, Dick, Harry, and John, and Emmanuel, and Courtney you see, but connecting with people who are relevant to you in lots of ways. And the third foundational piece that I teach it's how to build a brand. And we build our brand through our words. We do not build our brand by letting our forehead bang into the like button. We build our brand by sharing and engaging. So I'm going to talk about that uh, as we move forward. I'm going to talk about those three primary pieces. But before we can talk about those three primary pieces, you've got to be absolutely clear about two things. Maybe, maybe more. Well, let's, let's make it three things. Purpose. What's your purpose? Why, why, do you, why do you want to be on LinkedIn? What are you trying to achieve? And when you're clear about your purpose, then you're much more clear about your journey. Second thing you've got to be clear about is who do you want to be a part of your journey? Who is your target audience? John is probably teaching you uh, ideal client or your client. Uh, what's the word, John? I'm going to say it wrong. Your, your, uh, your caricature or the, what's the word, John? Your, your, the, the, there's a word. Uh, we want to date. We, I want to date you and they want to date me. And that's how I use it. I've got a lot of work to do. I swear I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> your target customers. Who do you want to date? Yeah, yeah, but there's a word for it. There's a there's a, a, a marketing phrase for it. I call it your ideal client, your ideal prospect. There's another word for it. Um, Target customer. Yeah, that's the that's 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 the phrase. There's, there's another word. When I say it, I go, oh my god, that's what we're talking about. But that's all right. Your ideal client, your target customer. That is who you want to go on this journey with, as well as their influencers. So when you're clear about why you're on there, you're clear about who you want to go on this journey with, target client, ideal client, uh, uh, target customer, and their influencers, then you're more likely to be successful. Then there's one more piece, the third piece. And Sarah's like, oh my God, this guy's off the charts. The third piece is this. What are the words that you are going to use when you talk? on LinkedIn, when you share on LinkedIn, engage on LinkedIn and build your profile on LinkedIn. Yeah, marketing calls these words, keywords. I refer to them as the words that resonate the most with my ideal client. 
So when you're clear about why you're on there and you're clear about who you're going on the journey with and you're clear about what words you're using, you're going to be far more successful than all those other schleps who their teacher said, get on LinkedIn and put your resume out there. That doesn't work. Purpose and goal. And by the way, I'm monitoring the chat and I can see what every single one of you are doing in your room, even though, you know, some of you still have your cameras off. I can still see you. Uh, uh, Charity is like, oh my God, can he really? So if you have a question or a thought, unmute yourself and go, ooh, 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 Teddy. And I'll let you ask the question or share your thought. All right, feel free to do that. Just make it a conversation. Thank you for everybody who dropped your profiles on here. I'll bring those up in a few minutes. By the way, all of you, this is important. All of you should have, you should have the three dots. If you look at the chat box, over past a little smiley face, you got three dots. Okay, don't do it now, but look at those three dots and make sure you know where they are. Before we get done, hit the three dots and save the chat. Why do you do that? Because you can save all the magical words you shared. Why do you do that? Because you can you can save everybody's LinkedIn profile and every single one of you are relevant to each other. One moment, I got to close the door. When I get ranting and raving like this, the people downstairs don't need to hear it, just you guys and ladies. All right, so save the chat before we get to the end, okay? All right, let's talk about the three pieces. Are you ready? Are, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Mary, Mary Helen, I need to see a nod, okay. <laughs> John, are you ready, John? All right, let me move some stuff out of the way here. I got to set the screen up because the stuff's all over the place. It's like a freaking uh, uh, hurricane went off in here. Like, poof. okay, I'm good. Holy cow, it'll be schooled now. You're going to get schooled, buddy. Hang tight. Strap in. Put that seatbelt on. Here it comes. All right. Number one, first foundational piece is you must build a LinkedIn profile that is highly relevant and focused on your target audience. The more purposeful you are at building your LinkedIn network, focus on your target audience. Listen to these words, telling them who you are, what you do. Listen to these words, how you create value for them. The more successful you're going to be using LinkedIn. I clicked on all the ones that I had a hyperlink on. The rest of them I got to copy and paste. So let's talk about this for a little bit. Step number one. Step number one. Everybody needs to have a profile picture. Anybody on LinkedIn who does not have a profile picture should be flogged. Because if you have a LinkedIn profile with no profile picture, you are telling the person who bumps into your LinkedIn profile, I haven't found Jeff yet. Yeah, dude, he's over to the end here. You're telling the person, look at your profile, if you don't have a profile picture, that you are not approachable. And if you're a sales professional, you daggone well better be approachable. So you got to edit your LinkedIn profile and make sure that we can see your LinkedIn profile picture. And you know what, Devin, it doesn't need to be a glamour shot. Is Devin on here? I think Devin was on here. Just needs to be, look, this is no freaking glamour shot. It's just my head. Okay? But everybody needs a profile picture. Number two, you, this is just your name. That field right there is, is, is only, not just, is only your name. Don't put anything else in there. Don't put, you know, MBA, PhD, D, B, D, D, A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, Z, just your name. Because that is the that field right there is the most important words on there. It's who I am. And here's the next big one. Oh, I need a 10-minute timer. Go. Here's the next big one. This field right here is 
according to LinkedIn, the number one most important field on LinkedIn. This field right here is the very first field that is indexed by the systems. And when people are doing a Google search or a LinkedIn search, nobody is searching for student at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. That's not what they're looking for. Remember earlier, I said, know your target audience and know what words resonate with them. Those are the words you put there. So when you're building your LinkedIn profile, marketing students, okay. Maybe webmasters, okay. You don't need to put UNCG, that's right there. But use the keywords and phrases that are important to your target audience. And you don't need to be the freak that I am. I use all 220 characters. I start with a statement. Stop wasting time. And then I said, I'm your LinkedIn trainer, strategist, seminar, webinars, workshops, remote. And I'm going to edit that in February. But I don't edit it every time. I don't, it's, I don't willy-nilly change that because it's indexed. But you want to tell your target audience who you are and what you do, keyword rich in that field. And it'll change. That's okay. But you constantly need to be asking yourself, who am I? And what do I do for the person who is important to me? And by the way, show of hands. Did we have the hand button? Where's the hand button? I don't know if we have the hand button. Crap, we don't have the freaking hand button. Um, we have I'm a assuming. Thumbs up. Yeah, it's down in the lower right. Reactions. Reactions? Show of hands. How many of you are looking for a job? Either. Do we have that? There we are. So seven. Abruptly, seven of you out of 27 are looking for a job. If you're looking for a job as a career coach, I'll tell you right now, you are not looking to have a conversation with HR. That is not who you want to talk with. Who do you want to talk with? Anybody know the answer to that question? Who is your ideal client, most important person if you're looking for a job? The hiring manager. Who said that? Yeah, you. Yes. Yes. The hiring manager, the person who has the need for what you bring to the table. So that's who you're speaking to right there, not HR. Okay. <clears throat> Questions, drop them in chat or unmute yourself. Let's go to the next big area. The next big area is your uh, contact information. You know, uh, Logan's customized her LinkedIn profile. Okay, so is John, so is Mary Helen, so is Navia, Devin. Look, all of you have. Oh my golly, who's coaching you guys? Kudos, all of you have customized it. I don't need to rant and rave about that. So good for you to do that. But let's go a little further. If you have a website relevant to you, put the website. If you want to share your email address and your phone number publicly, put that in there. Because by the way, the, you're going to be far more successful in life the more accessible you are. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, are you using Twitter? If you're using Twitter, put it in there. If you're not using Twitter, don't put it in there. But populate your contact information with information so that, first of all, your first, you know, phone number and email address are only seen by your uh, first level connections, but your websites, your Twitter, instant messaging, can be seen by others. And so make yourself as accessible as you can. Okay. Here's another, let's go a little deeper. Okay. Let's go. I'm not going to, I can't dig into it all because I only have six hours with you guys. So let's talk about your about section. Courtney, I'm busting. I'm not going to spend six hours with you. Your about section. Listen to this. This is critical. All they see by default are these top three lines. That's all I see in these top three lines. So in those top three lines, listen to these words. Listen to these words. Read these words. I hope you can see that. Can you see that? I am. I am. Not I want to be. I am. So what you talk about here is who am I? 
Now I get it. You're in school. I get it. You're studying. I get it. You're growing. But tell me who you are. Don't say I want to be. Think that way. It's a huge mindset shift for everybody. We all say, I want to be this. I want to do that. And one day I want to do this. Screw that. Tell me who you are and who you are should be what you really want to be. And to, in December 15th, 2010, I quit my, my sales job where I was making $6 million a year in my mind. I quit that job. I gave it all up. And I immediately became Teddy Burris. LinkedIn strategist, trainer, and coach. And I never, I never made a freaking penny. I never made a penny doing that. But that's who I became. Think that way. So in this first three lines, tell your target audience who I am. And I get it. It's going to change. And as you decide it changes, as you make changes in your career journey, whatever, then that's those statements need to change, but lead with that. And it's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to come up with this immediately, but I want you to think that way. Then in the rest of this content, think of those words that resonate in your target audience, sales professional, business development professional, sales development representative, um, closer, um, you know, uh, relationship development, business development, um, you know, whatever the words are, you want to write about those words. And maybe you don't have a million hours of experiences in that, but I wager you got some experiences learning about it in class. So talk about what you've learned. And you don't need to put 2,600 characters here, but put a little bit in the about section. Because when people look at your about section and they go, oh my golly, this person does or has done or is learning to do what I'm looking for, then they want to talk to this lady. Or they want to talk to this lady when they see that. And I look, I just called you out, lady. Navia, aspiring sales? No. You're a growing, developing sales professional. So I, I'm okay with aspiring, but, you know, make sure you're speaking to your target audience. Questions or thoughts, unmute or hit chat. And then the rest of your LinkedIn profile, what you want to think about is what does my experience section say? As a brand ambassador for University of North Carolina, uh, Greensboro, what do you do? What have you done? What can you do? How have you, listen to these words, how have you created value? I like that. Develop the skills on how to read met marketing metrics. Woo woo! You know, to, uh, to move forward and grow. That's a great statement. But, you know, you want to look at your experience. Is, is Devin still on here? Say with Devin. Devin, Devin's still on here. He's muted and he's got his camera off so he can't see me. But, you know, in, um, in your experience section, you know, you know, I don't know, Devin, have you worked anywhere before? Maybe not. So you don't have any work experience. No harm, no foul, but you know, think about what kind of work have you done in the past? Have you done anything that can help you grow? So um, about section, the experience section. You know what, Charity? Where's Charity? She's on here, I see her. You know, daycare teacher, you've grown five years and 11 months. You have freaking learned something as a daycare teacher. I bet you've learned a little bit about business. I bet you've learned a little bit about um, human interaction. Charity, I bet you've learned a little bit about uh, empathy, leadership, communications, active listening, fair, those are the stories you put there. That's the kind of stuff you're growing from because every single one of those things I just spoke about are ways for you to grow. Empathy is a powerful sales tool. Active listening, a powerful sales tool. So talk about those kinds of stuff. Don't talk about diaper rashes and kids throwing up, okay? I, <laughs> I used to uh, own a daycare, so... 
All right, let's go to the next big section. You ready for the next big section? The next big section is your skills. Your skill section, you want to put skill words in there that you can that you have and or are developing, Jeff, not just skills that they're looking for. Because Jeff, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you out because I'm playing with you now. If you put in there that you're a dust bunny collector and I call you up and say, Jeff, tell me about your dust bunny collecting skills. And you go, huh, I, I don't have that, I'm sorry. So you better put a skill in there that people can testify to. It's well, listen to these words that is relevant to what you're trying to be or what you are. So populate your skills and more importantly than populate them, make sure you pin the top three that are the most important to your journey. Because when I look at your LinkedIn profile, by default, Noah, all I see are those first three skills. So if you got barista and dust bunny collector and you know, you know, cattle rustler up here from your old life, then I'm gonna quickly disqualify you for any conversation because you're leading with stuff that's irrelevant to me. <clears throat> so, and then again, any skill that you have that is no longer relevant, look at Devin. He's over there banging on the keyboard, so I don't call him out anymore for not having the picture. Good stuff, man. Um, if I, you know, if um, you you want to remove any skill that is no longer relevant to your journey, you can always add it back if your journey changes. Okay. Questions, thoughts, drop them in chat or unmute yourself. Otherwise, I keep ranting and raving. I got another two minutes to talk about profiles. <clears throat> um, I got to go back to mine. Let's see who I guess somebody else's might have what I'm looking for. I happen to have a question. Yes, ma'am. At what point do we get rid of certain like experiences, almost like uh, in comparison to like a, a resume? There comes a point in time where it's not relevant or we get rid of it. Do you, <laughs> do you recommend us getting rid of some of those things if they don't necessarily complement what we're doing now? Or are they still skills that are still pretty good to share and showcase themselves? So I go back to 1997. That, that's when I got out of high school, maybe. Do you believe that? <clears throat> I, stopped at, I stopped at 1997 because nobody needs to know that true story I drove a trash truck in the morning, delivered caskets in the afternoon for the same company. John, true story, dude. I didn't sell them, man. It was just in time delivery too, by the way. <laughs> true story, man. Um, nobody needs to know that I, I worked in a water purification plant and I have certifications up the yang yang for reverse osmosis. No one needs to know that I spent 30 years, I don't know how I pulled this off. Remember, I started in elementary school, 30 years in the IT industry. Why? Navia, it's no longer relevant. Okay. Now I'm going to offer for all of you, because I'm going to wager all of you are just a little bit younger than me, except for John, and you can call him old man. The rest of you are a little bit younger than me. Don't be in a hurry to take it off, except for when it becomes totally irrelevant. And you can't show professional growth in that role relevant to who you are today. Great question, Amy. So uh, where was I going? I was going, where was I going? Where was I was going? Uh, license and certifications. You know, put license and certifications on there that are relevant. Volunteer experience. Show people that you care about your community and that you serve. And I'm hoping that you guys care about your communities and find ways to serve. Okay, except for where it's irrelevant. If you're a member of the KKK, ISIS, NRA, Republican or Democratic Party, and you're not in those industries, do not put that on your LinkedIn profile. Are we clear about that? Charity, are we good? Um, skills endorsed recommendations. You know, as you're growing and learning, you know, you know, maybe I'll put a little bit on John's desk. You know, ask for a recommendation from someone that shows that you've grown as a sales professional. Ask for a recommendation from someone you've done work with who can say, oh my golly, 
you know, Erica did this project for me and I love what she did. It really turned out to be great. Erica did this that's relevant to who Erica is. So ask for recommendations. <clears throat> Accomplishments, this is eight, there's eight subsections in here. Again, all of that is right here. Look right here. All of that's underneath add section. Here's accomplishments. If you have publications online, courses you've taken, honors and awards, maybe, maybe, maybe not test scores. If you're bilingual, you better have that on your LinkedIn profile. If you're trilingual and you don't have it on there, I'll hunt you down. Organizations that are your, that are a part of, et cetera, et cetera. This is your bit LinkedIn profile. It is your brochure. It is not your resume. Let's move to step two. <clears throat> As you're building your brochure, step two is to build your LinkedIn network. Now, there are two people that you are looking for to connect with. Your target client, your target audience. If you're looking for a job, it's that hiring manager. You're looking for the people who are directly relevant to your goals, directly relevant to your career goal or your business goal. Every day, every single day, you should be looking for somebody, listen to these words, who play in the sandbox you want to play with, with the toys you want to play with. Look for people who play in the sandbox where you want to be, who play with the toys you want to play with. Every day, you should be looking for someone new. Every day, whether you connect with them on LinkedIn or you just get in a conversation with them. But behind me, you'll see that the, head, the banner says it all starts with the conversation. As a career coach, I'm going to tell you right now, the most powerful way you'll find the job for you is through a conversation, not through Indeed, Monster, Simply Hired, Career Builder, Ladders, and all that stuff. That's how it's going to happen. By the way, it's also how you're going to find the best deals as a sales professional, the best opportunities as a sales professional through conversations. In order to have conversations, you've got to build your network so you can meet and get, listen to these words, and get introduced to people that you want to talk with. Now, I told you, I recommended to you that you save the chat. So you can save as many LinkedIn profiles of the people who are in the session with you who are all on the same journey you're on. Why do you want to do that? Well, here's why you want to do that. You know, <clears throat> how many of you know Tiffany Grant or, or, or Mary Ellen? You know, here's four mutual connections. If I want to have a conversation with this Noah dude, I'm not sending him a LinkedIn invite, except for he's on the call right now. I probably could. Is Noah on the call? Yeah. Okay. But I haven't met him yet because his camera's off, okay? If I want to connect with him, I am not sending him a connect request. If he's important to my journey, I'm not sending him a connect request. I'm going to call Tiffany or Mary Ellen or Victor or Erica and I'm going to ask them to introduce me to him. Everybody else is sending out LinkedIn invites, reckless abandon, hoping and praying that they accept it, and then they don't know what to do with it. And that's just not the right way to do it. The best way to build your LinkedIn network is to ask the people that you already have some level of relationship with to introduce you to that next person. Now, every one of you on this call should easily be able to send, I'm going I'm to do this with Noah. Noah, can I send you an invite to connect? I need your microphone off and a yes or a no. Or your microphone on. Yes. Yeah, All you right. Can. Thank you. Oh, God. This is so cool. This is so freaking cool. When you send somebody an invite to connect, you always hit that add a note button. I don't care if you're sitting side by side. You always add a note for two reasons. Number one,
Here's the reason, one, two reasons. Now I'm gonna do UNC, UNCG Teddy. Two reasons why you do it. Number one, it's the polite thing to do. Number two, it reminds Noah and it will remind me later on how I met him. As you all start to get closer and closer to being an old man like John, you're going to want to know where you met the people you're connected with. You're going to want to remind them where you met them with. Because that, that reminder, that, that relevant relationship helps to grow the network, helps to grow the relationship with that person. Number one, you do it because it's the right thing to do. Number two is it reminds you. And number three, it leaves in his messaging, in his messaging, it leaves a, a, what's called a cook, a crumb. So you can see that, oh my golly, this is where I met this lady. This happened to run across her where she reminded me that we're meeting at, at this event. So it leaves a crumb in their inbox. So every single time you send an invite, always include a personal note. Make it about them. Never send a LinkedIn invite asking if you can sell your widget to them. Pfft, wrong thing to do. Sending LinkedIn connect requests out are for one thing and one thing only. To connect. Everything else comes after that. And then, thank you, Noah, for role-playing this with me. Then, when Noah accepts my invite, Here's what you do. Now, let me position this. You engage with every single person who connects with you. After you connect, you engage with every single person. But your level of engagement, the amount of energy you put into that is directly proportional to their relevance to you. If they're not a target audience, if they're not an influencer, if they're not somebody who can impact your business, your life, your career in a very positive way, then, you know, Noah, no disrespect, but the message back to Noah is a very friendly and polite message. And do grammar and spell check, Teddy. And I always offer to help. I always offer to help. I don't care who it is. My help may be my time, sweat, energy, and dollar. My help, maybe I introduce them to someone else. But you always offer to help. Now, if Noah had been highly relevant to my career goals or my business goals, you know what I would have done? picked up the freaking phone and called him. This is sales 101. You do not connect with people, you, you, your target audience, your ideal client, see their phone number on their LinkedIn profile and not call them and say hello. Thank them for the connection and make the conversation, this is critical, all about them. So if, Noah, if, if you could have bought my widgets, dude, I would have called you because kudos to you, you get your phone number there. Is this your home address, Noah? Yeah, that's my home address. Take it off your LinkedIn profile. Except, wait, let me copy it. Hey, everybody else copy it. And then Noah, what time's dinner? Dinner? I just ate dinner. So yeah. don't, don't publish your home address on your LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just not important. <clears throat> and by the way, you got, to, you got your UNCG uh, email address on there. This is for everybody else on here. That's fine to make that your primary. Put your other personal email address also on your LinkedIn profile so that you keep, I don't know how long you keep the UNCG. Do you know, Noah? I don't know. That's just the one that I respond, I checked most recently. I get I that, but you, you may lose that. So make sure you put an email address on your LinkedIn profile. It doesn't need to be primary. It can be a secondary, which is not visible. Make sure you have an email address on there that you never freaking lose. Okay. So kudos, though.
Uh, remind, call me on June 27th so I can say happy birthday. Um, networking. Look for the people who are highly relevant to you. Start with each other. Because, I mean, I'm telling you right now, you're going to miss out on the opportunities. You know, when I connect with, where's John? John's up here somewhere. I lost him. You know, look for somebody that, you know, I'm connected with. So I can have this, you know. So, you know, John and I have 227 shared connections. Well, that's good. John and I have a decent relationship. I can pretty much call him anytime I want. And he takes my calls, which freaks me out. But if I want to meet somebody that John is connected to, and he's hiding his network, so I can't see that. But if he wasn't hiding his network, and I see he's connected to somebody I want to have a conversation with, I'm calling the man up. I'm striking up a conversation. I'm rejuvenating my relationship with him. And I'm going to ask him for an introduction. Because again, if I want to connect with somebody, the best way to connect with somebody is to ask somebody you have a mutual relationship. Emmanuel, do you know Mary Lisa? Are you on here, Emmanuel? Yeah, my am. Yeah, do you know Mary Lisa? Uh, not personally, but I'm pretty sure she came to one of the NCSI meetings. Yeah. I know her fairly well. I could ask her for an introduction. And so, um, you know, and I know this Mary Helen lady too. Cool check. She'll, she'll, if I ask her for help, she'll help me out. Mary Helen, apologize for referring to you as a check. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, don't just connect. Look, I'm an absolute freak. You do not need to be like me. I got 14,000 connections. This is a lot of energy, a whole lot of energy since 2007. Pretty much every single one of those people I've engaged with in some way or another directly. Why is that important to me? That makes me money. That moves the needle. That gets introduced, to, that gets me introduced to business. This is not a game. This is not Facebook for fun or Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok, even though I love TikTok. There's some really cool videos. And I know people who make money on TikTok, not revenue money. I'm talking about real money. But these connections are real to me. I focus on connecting with my target audience. I focus on connecting with their influencers. I focus on connecting with people who can move me forward. So I can reach out to any one of these people I've just connected with and ask for an introduction. Questions, thoughts, anybody? Logan says, three to four months after graduation, you lose your UNC email address. Put your personal one on there before you lose it. You don't want to lose your LinkedIn profile, kids. I'm telling you. Questions, thoughts? I have I a question. Go ahead, um, Logan. I was trying to update some of my contact info and it says that I have my email up there, but it's only visible to like my friends, like who actually I accept connections with. Do you know how to change it? So it's public. You know what? I had that as a video to create. Somebody asked me that question just this morning and I couldn't find it. Here it is here. LinkedIn profile, public, everybody. So I, uh, pay attention to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And um, you'll see the video. Okay, thank you. You, you, youtube.com, TL Burris. Subscribe to that channel. Uh, it's, I got a, I fat fingered it, I'm sorry. But you can see what it is. Um, but, but again, Logan, you know, the most important thing is to have your email address visible to all your first level connections. Um, you can make it visible to pu publicly. Be careful, I would say for students, and I'm not trying to be a sexist, I am trying to be real for my female friends, be careful making yourself overly accessible, okay? Courtney, you and, and I don't have to worry about that, you know, but the world's full of freaking idiots and, you know, we got to deal with them, right, Alex? <laughs> so, but, you know, it, um, and I just accepted our your, your invite Oh, that's funny. I can't see. I got to hit refresh because I know I should be able to see more than that. <clears throat> so there's your email address and uh, your LinkedIn profile. So yeah, just Logan, I don't know if you want to be overly accessible, but definitely make sure your, your network, your, your connections, especially if you're connecting with people who are relevant to you. 
And by the way, when you get LinkedIn invites, this is important. You do not need to go through these and hit accept, 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 accept. You do not and you should not do that. By the way, never manage invites from here. Manage it from over here. What you want to do is figure out who is this tabby lady, this patra lady, is Devin. You don't need to do everything I do. If you don't think they're relevant to you, hit the freaking ignore button. But if you want to validate it, they're relevant to you, right click, open in a new tab, go look at this patra lady and figure out how relevant she is. If she's if you can't, if you don't see relevance, hit this freaking X right here, go back to that page, hit the ignore button. Only connect with people who are relevant to you. And again, once you connect, what do you do next? Send a note. Call, email, or if they're not highly relevant, you send them a note. Absolutely. Engage with them. Please do not just connect. It's like collecting a bucket of business cards that doesn't do you a daggone bit of good. Let's go to step three. Step three. So as you're building your presence on LinkedIn, sharing with people who you are and what you do, how you create value and solve problems for them through your LinkedIn profile. As you're building your LinkedIn network, by the way, I've got almost 22,000 followers. I do not have that many connections. As you, and you saw that, as you build your LinkedIn network, connecting with your target audience, their influencers. And by the way, you also connect with people who are relevant to you in lots of different ways. And every one of you on this call are relevant to each other. Connect with people who have ideas and perspectives that inspire you. Connect with people that you meet along the way. But as you're building your presence and building your network, do not repeat, do not do this. Do not stand in the corner and watch. Do something. Show up. Share. Engage. Get into conversations. This is the magic of LinkedIn. The magic of LinkedIn happens when you engage. Your brand is built by the words that you use. So if you want to grow your brand as a sales professional or a marketing professional or any kind of professional, you might dust bunny collector professional, then you need to get into conversations and start conversations. Do you need to do this every day? No. Should you show up a couple times a week? Maybe. Depends on what phase of your journey you're in. But you absolutely need to grow your brand through your words. This number right here, who viewed your profile, is the biggest number that's going to get impacted by your engagement. And I would wager that 90% of you on this call, 98.3% of you on this call, have a double-digit number right there. On your LinkedIn profile, under your dashboard, or it might be called resources, it's probably a double digit. And the more people you get to look at your LinkedIn profile, the better your LinkedIn profile is written, the more you're going to get, this is the dude I need to meet. Give you an example. This happened to me today. So I, uh, this lady sends me an invite to connect. Ah, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay. I like, you know, it looks like you're fairly new to LinkedIn. How can I help you? And I, I looked at her LinkedIn profile where she said she likes to ride, uh, listen to classic rock while riding a Harley and hanging out with her grandkids. I saw that on her profile. I commented. Look what she did. After delving deeper into your profile, I think a conversation is worthwhile. So the more focused your LinkedIn profile is and the more you engage and share and get into conversations, the more likely you're going to get into conversations about business, career, life, community, opportunities. The magic happens right here. 
and you don't need to be the freak I am. This is my sandbox, okay? Hey, wake up. So I post a fair amount, okay? On a regular basis, I post stuff pretty frequently. And I don't post anything, listen to these words, hoping and praying it goes freaking viral. It's not what I, maybe it happens all the time. It's not what I'm looking for. You should see my Instagram. No, I'm joking. I got 128 likes on that post. That's not what I'm after. <laughs> I'm after continually participating and sharing and getting into conversations. I don't need any one conversation to take me beyond life and, and, and create fantastic. I create documents because I don't want a naked page here. You know, I go look at uh, Alaya. I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Alaya, you know, naked. Naked. I don't want that. So create a document. Write one article. Oh, my golly. Share something. Where is Alaya? Golly, are you still on here? Yes, she yes, is. Yes, I'm here. Now, I'm calling you out bluntly, girl. <laughs> so do, so do something. Even if you only do it twice a month, do something. But most importantly, I'm going to stop picking on Eli. Let me pick on somebody else next. Noah, I picked on Noah. Devin, I picked on Scarlett. Scarlett on here. She is. Okay. So if you look at activity, naked, actually it used to be called desert. I call it naked. Naked, naked you know, and nine months ago, all right? But look here, look at this. Like, celebrate. Scarlett, are you on here? Can you hear me? Like. Uh, yes, I can. Okay, I'm about ready to drop it on you here. Celebrate, like. The one thing, one sec. <clears throat> the one thing that gives you the least, the least amount of brand value is bumping into that like button over and over and over again. Scarlett, the like button is not your friend. What is your friend for brand development is comment in meaningful ways. You know? So you got Leo's working, uh, an internship with my buddies. Uh, I, I probably know who she's working with in commercial design. Um, so what's a meaningful comment? A meaningful comment, my words might be, oh my God, Aaliyah, I'm so happy for you working with Furniture Land South. It's a really fantastic brand. I hope and pray that you learn a whole lot there and come out of there a much richer woman with your skills. Kudos for you for landing that internship. That might be the words I use, but a meaningful comment is not three words. It's a minimum of six. And again, my buddy Doug Copeland uh, and 31 other people just bumped into the like button. If you want to build your brand, utter words. What words should they be relevant to the brand you want to build? Questions, thoughts? John left me. <laughs> he said he had to go. So... And there's lots of ways to share content. There's lots of ways to engage. The most important thing is to ask yourself, am I, is what I'm about ready to say going to build my brand? Is what I'm about ready to say meaningful and relevant to, uh, to uh, Mac Bank's content? Can it add value? And there is no value because there's nothing going on here. Can, oh no, does it add value to the conversation or start a good conversation? And do you need to do this every day? No, but at the very least, show up every now and then and, and do something, say something, show your value through your words. This is, this is the gist of it. This is the magic. Build a profile that clearly tells your target audience who you are, and I get it. Scarlett's going to keep changing because she's going to keep growing and learning. Um, you know, she's going to she's going to pivot, adjust, and go do something different, something else. That's all good. But every 
time you make an adjustment in your career or in your business. Just like marketing 101, you need to come back to this brochure and say, does this brochure represent me? So Erica, good to have you on here. Take care. And if it if it if this brochure does not represent you, then you need to adjust it. Otherwise, it's distracting everyone who's important to you from what you really are. Grow your network every day. Think about this every day. Be looking for ways to connect with the people who are relevant to your journey. The people who can introduce you to the target audience. Look, if you want to go work, you know, if your goal is to go work for, who is this one here? Is this Noah? Um, Emmanuel. You know, if your goal is to go work, uh, where, Emmanuel, unmute yourself. What kind of job are you looking for? Ideally. All right, so dream job, I would say like uh, working with the marketing department of like a sports team, specifically basketball. Specifically basketball? Yeah. Yeah. So how many people do you know who play in basketball and do marketing? Who play in basketball? Oh, I said it wrong. Good. Thanks. How many people do you know who play in that sandbox doing marketing in the basketball industry? Uh, two people. Well, good. That's two better than what most people say. So the more, are you connected with them on LinkedIn? Yes. Good. Have you had conversations with them about your ideas? And I like the word dream job. There's nothing wrong with that phrase. Yes. Good. Have you asked them to introduce you to someone else for a conversation? No, I have not. So you know these people who play in this sandbox they know you and understand you. The next step is to go back to them and go, you know, I really want to keep looking at this idea. I really am excited about getting into marketing in the sports industry, specifically basketball. Do you know somebody else that I should talk with so I can keep learning about this idea? I wrote the book, Networking for Mutual Benefit. The last question that needs to go through your mind before you end a conversation is, do I have permission to ask for help? If I have permission to ask for help, the help you want is this. Who do you know I should talk to next? Never ask for a job, ever, ever ask for a job unless you know clearly they have one in their pocket. Ask for that next conversation. <clears throat> So as you're growing your network and you're looking for these next people to talk to, the next people to connect with, the next people to, to learn from, then you also start engaging and sharing. And again, a little bit is better than nothing. And walk away from that like button, dude. Okay? I mean, who's Wasserman? Do you know who Wasserman is? It's a company. Yeah, but are they a pizza company? Oh, my bad. Uh, advertising <laughs> slash marketing. Athletes, dude. So they got 1,007 employees. You look at those 1,007 employees. Look here. Watch this, dude. Connections, second level, show results. <clears throat> so I know 16 people who I know, 16 people who I have mutual connections with. I could call Eric. I could call Jason Pike. I could call Tony Lee. I could call Linda. I could call Molly and ask for an introduction to these people. This is why you grow your network. Because the bigger your LinkedIn network is, the easier it becomes to connect with the people that you want to talk with. Sports marketing, Craig Smith, Ben Kenny, Steve Ellis. Oh my God, man! This this would be a this would be this is what this is where you want to be. You want to be on this dude's payroll, making one hundred thirteen thousand dollars a year and a company car. <clears throat> Maybe not the company car. Don't rush this, Emmanuel. But the more you grow your network, the easier it becomes to get to the people you want to talk with. And by the way, never discount the person in the laundry service. Never discount the housewife. Never discount the grandmother or the grandfather. 
Because no matter what you think, they freaking know people that you need to know. Just curious, uh, who's uh, Carter Bills down there? I don't know who he is. Yeah, I know what Carter Bills. I was just curious if that's the same one. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> He's in Raleigh. I was, camp, I was his camp counselor. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I would be doing some research. What school was this? He went to High Point. Where'd you go to school, Jeff? Uh, I believe he went to High Point Central. Uh, if not, maybe Westchester or something like that. Yeah, this guy went to APU. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just thinking of high school. But That's whenever the, I knew him. This is the research you do, Jeff. You know, you find people and you figure out who the heck are they? How do If, if this is the sure. guy I want to talk with, how do I get in touch with him? Sarah, good to have you on here. Take care. You know, and I got 37 mutual connections there. It gets easy for me to connect with these people. You've heard, you may or may not have ever heard this, the statement, so 13 degrees from Kevin Bacon. That is so freaking old school. Three degrees from Teddy Burris. Kevin Bacon ain't got nothing on me. So satire. But, all right, any other, uh, it's almost the witching hour. Anybody have any questions that I can answer for you? Well, if no one has any questions, I just want to give you a or say thank you so much for spending your time and coming uh, to talk to us. I know I learned something, so I'm sure everyone else learned a lot. Uh, I learned yeah. something from you too, Logan. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Look, if I can help you, hunt me down and ask me for help. I'm glad to help anybody I can. Logan, thank you for letting me come on. Yes, and if you uh, don't mind, can you either send the YouTube link or the recording to Mr. Chapman? You mean John? Yes. Well, he says, I don't know. call me John. I, I'm joking. Call me Mr. Chapman. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm joking. I absolutely <laughs> yes. get that. I will send Mr. Chapman a link to the YouTube video for him to share with you guys. Do me a huge favor. Watch the video. Like it. You know, if you if you say if you've got a comment, drop a comment, subscribe to my channel. That's how I get paid because my YouTube channel is monetized. So thank you all very much. I wish you all the freaking best. Thank you. Have a great thank night. You. Thanks thank everyone for coming.